talk about some of Saturn's icy moons. Saturn has a whole bunch of moons, as does Jupiter. Um, but there are six large icy moons. Um, Mimas, which is the Death Star moon. Enceladus, which we'll talk about. Um, Tethys, which is another big moon. And one of my college friends has a band called Tethys Ocean. Um, Dion, Rhea. And then um, Iapetus is a moon that has like several different colors on its surface. So we're not going to go into any detail on any of these icy moons except for Enceladus because I think it's the most interesting one. But maybe you want to explore some of these other ones when you make your posters today. Um, in addition to these six icy moons, Saturn has one enormous moon, Titan, uh, which we've talked about before a little bit. Titan is a rocky and icy body uh, with a thick atmosphere and it has an entire hydrologic cycle of methane and ethane instead of water. So it has lakes, rivers, and rain of methane and ethane, and it also sports underground water oceans. This image is taken in the infrared um, because it has a thick, hazy atmosphere, kind of like Venus, that prevents us from being able to image all the way to its surface. So question for you, Titan and Mercury are very similar in terms of mass and radius. So why do you suppose that Titan has a thick atmosphere while Mercury has none? All right, yep, lots of, lots of good thoughts here. So um, their size controls, well, their, their radius and mass together controls their escape velocity, um, but it also matters how fast the gas molecules can move on their surface to determine whether or not they will be able to exceed escape velocity. And Mercury being a lot closer to the sun it has a higher surface temperature. So the average molecular speed there would be higher. And so gases in the warmer environment move faster. They're more likely to escape. Titan, far from the sun, colder, slower molecules, more likely to be retained on its surface. So um, Titan's atmosphere is very hazy. It has a haze layer high in its atmosphere. And then under that, there's a photochemical haze. So like Venus, um, molecules in its atmosphere react with UV light from the sun, they change chemical composition, and they give it an orange haze. Um, underneath that, there are clouds of methane and ethane in a kind of a similar location as those on Earth, what we would consider the troposphere, um, but the total thickness of Titan's atmosphere is a lot larger than Earth's. And like I said, it, it has a whole hydrologic cycle. So methane and ethane evaporate, condense into clouds, rain back to the surface. And as a result, there are interesting surface features. Um, I think some of the most interesting are, they're labeled here on this map. Um, they all have fun names from mythological sea creatures. Um, the labyrinth is a maze of valleys made by erosion caused by the raining methane and ethane. Um, there's this sort of hummocky region, which is like rough and uneven icy terrain. And then there are lakes at the northern polar regions. Um, here's a picture of the labyrinths. This kind of gives the essence of the labyrinths looking like a maze. And then here's the picture of the seas on Titan's surface. Um, because Titan has these lakes, it's an interesting object to explore in our solar system. We don't really know if it's, you know, all the life that we know depends on water to exist, but could it be possible that there are organisms that could depend on methane and ethane to exist? I'm not an astrobiologist, but maybe. So Titan's an interesting place to explore for that reason. Um, okay, so all these names are different sea creatures. There are tidal heating um, on lots of these worlds, Ganymede, Io, Europa, and um, Titan all experience tidal heating. So does Enceladus. This is another moon of Saturn. Um, a lot of these are also tidally locked, meaning that the same face um, always faces the planet or that they're in resonances with each other. So it's pretty interesting to me that there's a lot of um, orbital patterns that these outer worlds get stuck in. 
All right, briefly want to talk about Enceladus, the last of our planets that experiences planets, moons that experiences tidal heating. Um, so just based on its appearance alone, what can you conclude about its ge geological activity? So last chat question here, take about a minute and then I'll tell you when to send. Awesome, lots of good ideas here. So yes, there are, um, there's a few craters we can see or, um, kind of smattered around the surface, um, but not very many, especially compared to like Callisto, right? So there's ample evidence that this has been recently resurfaced. Um, there's lots of different interesting features like these channels that maybe have been cut by water. Um, there's that sort of similar like cross hatching appearance like we saw on Europa. And um, yeah, just in general, it looks like a very fresh surface. So we're pretty sure that it has some sort of geologic activity. And again, this is driven by tidal heating from Saturn. Um, Enceladus is unique in that it does actually have an atmosphere. So Titan has a thick atmosphere. Enceladus has a thin atmosphere made of water vapor. And uh, uh, again, because of its tidal heating, it has a subsurface ocean, which is liquid. And there are actually geysers that spray that water into space. Um, these little blue lines are called tiger stripes. And here's what the geysers, this is an artist's rendition of what they would look like. The idea is essentially that the, um, the icy crust is um, cracked by heat from the tidal heating and that sends water toward the surface. It's possible that there's also um, deeper geological activity that could be similar to the hydrothermal vents under Earth's oceans, um, where it's hypothesized that that's where life could have started on Earth is in those hydrothermal vent regions. So there could be a similar thing happening here on Enceladus, which is an extremely interesting science target as a result. These water geysers have not only been imaged by the Cassini probe, but they've actually been measured too. And so we know for sure that they're made of water vapor and that it's salt water. And then the water spewing out of Enceladus creates one of Saturn's rings. We'll talk about that again on Wednesday. Um, but I think this is pretty cool how not only can the planet affect the moon, but the moon can affect, you know, the overall structure of the planet's rings. I think Enceladus is a very, very exciting planet. Probably my favorite outer planet. Um, Carolyn Porco was the uh, imaging director for the Cassini mission. There's this movie called Cassini Death Dive into Saturn. It's a really good watch. I think it's a PBS Nova documentary, um, but you can also um, ha see her, her, well, hear her talk on Star Talk. And then this image is probably, I think, her favorite image. Um, the, here's the E ring from Enceladus. Here's the rest of Saturn's rings. Saturn is the large object in the upper left. And then this little blue dot that the arrow is pointing to, that's Earth. 